fan of Tabitha Brown for a while now and so when I went to Target the other day and I saw this bright, bold, colorful display with so much stuff, like not just snacks but also main courses and dips and hummuses and cream cheeses and condiments and tea and homeware items and kitchenware items. She's taken over Target is essentially what has happened and there's just so much variety within the range so I kind of thought it'd be fun to do a Tabitha Brown collection review. So I'm doing a taste test in this video today. I hope you guys enjoy it and let's get started. Oh, this video is not sponsored and also if you're new here, my name is Nicole, also known as Nikki Vegan. If you like videos like this and also vegan recipe ideas and vlogs and what to eat in a day videos, then go ahead and click the subscribe button right here. It's totally free to subscribe, but it will keep you on track with all of my future videos. I post on Sundays and also sometimes on Wednesdays too. First, I'm going to be trying the dill pickle popcorn. All of the popcorns are these big colorful bags that really just sort of draw your attention right to them. So I'm most excited to try these. I really love the dill pickle popcorn from Trader Joe's. So I'm really hoping this is just as good. It's like mild in flavor. I wouldn't say it's like super in your face and the texture of the popcorn is crunchy, but not hard. I'm gonna give this a six out of 10. I like the flavor, but it's very mild. And it's the kind of thing, like if you just have one, you're not gonna be blown away with flavor. But if you keep snacking on it, it's pretty good. And it does become kind of addicting. I love this packaging. Ooh, mm. this one has way more like flavor right away. It's really good. I'm tasting Parmesan cheese. It's like a salty Parmesan cheese. It's not overly salty, but it's much saltier than the other one. I would rebuy this one. This is an eight and a half out of 10 for me. This one I accidentally opened upside down, so I love kettle corn. Basically what this is, sweet, salty, it's subtle. I've had a lot of different kinds of kettle corn and some of them have a lot more sweetness or a lot more saltiness. This is pretty balanced when it comes to the sweet and salty, but then there's this kind of underlying like butteriness to it, almost like a movie theater of butter flavor, but it's mild. I'm gonna give this a seven and a half out of 10. So addicting, that's the thing, you can't stop eating it. Up next, I've got the raviolis, and I was really excited to see how many different flavor options there were. I got the pizza flavor because I thought that would be really good with just like a simple store-bought marinara, and I do have marinara, but I wanted to try them on their own first. The inside is nice and creamy and cheesy, and it has a little bits of sun-dried tomato all throughout the filling. The ravioli itself is like on a little bit on the thicker side, which is nice because it makes them feel pretty substantial. And they're not overly salty on their own, which is I think probably on purpose because you would add a sauce. So I bet with a marinara sauce, it would be even better. I'm sure future me will have already experienced that. So I'll put a graphic on the screen while I'm editing this to let you guys know what I think of it with the marinara. Especially if you're cooking for non-vegans, I don't think they would know this was vegan, especially if you have a really yummy sauce and if you cooked it with like some roasted broccoli on the side and you put some vegan Parmesan cheese on top, it's delicious. This is the sweet pea and basil. Ooh, I don't know why I was expecting pesto. I guess just when I see basil and ravioli, my mind just goes to pesto. It's not pesto. Yeah, you really get like sweet green peas. It's very fresh, very springtime. I think I would do one of my cashew cream sauces. I'll put the recipe in the description box below, but I would make it kind of thinner and I would just sort of simmer the finished ravioli in that with a little bit more basil and lots of black pepper and maybe a little lemon zest. Ooh, that would be really good. Like spring. I really like that one. I think it's probably my favorite of the two that I tried. If you like peas, you will like it. If you don't like peas, you will not like it because that's what it tastes like. But I really like peas and I love peas with like creamy peppery sauces. So Tabitha's line has a lot of pre-made vegan meats and sausages and even barbecue patties. They were totally sold out. They had one package left and it was these mushroom burgers. It's like wild mushroom and wine, I believe. They're made primarily out of pea protein and they have 20 grams of protein each. So I was really excited to try these because my boyfriend is not vegan. A lot of you guys have asked me that. He's not vegan, but he loves vegan food. He eats vegan food with me all the time. And he's one of those guys who's like, I need my protein. And so I'm always trying to show him like you can get so much protein without vegan substitutes, but there are also great vegan substitutes that just make it super easy and convenient when you don't have a lot of time to like thoughtfully construct a meal. You can just make a simple burger just like you always used to and get so much great quality protein. So I actually went ahead and I made a burger, but I cut myself off a little piece so that I could try it on its own without all the accoutrements just to get like a really authentic. It smells like a Beyond patty. I don't smell mushrooms or wine or anything. It's like just kind of smoky and meaty. 
Mmm, the texture is really nice. I have so many thoughts. I really think following the package directions when you're cooking burgers like this is literally a game changer because the way you cook the burger is gonna vary from brand to brand. I do think though that there are some basic cooking tips that really make all the difference when it comes to making vegan burgers. The first, and it says this in the directions on Tabitha's burgers, is to use medium heat and you don't wanna flip it around too much. You wanna lightly grease the skillet. You wanna let the skillet actually come to temperature first so you don't wanna put Put the burger patty onto a cold skillet because that'll make it really impossible to flip. You're not going to get even browning. It might stick to the pan and fall apart and get crumbly and it's really easy to blame the burger for that but that's really just like because the cold burger was in a cold pan. So what you want to do, add the oil to the pan, set it to medium. It's really tempting to set it higher so you can cook it faster but really what that's going to do is quickly brown the outside, even burn the outside while the inside doesn't cook properly. So what you want to do is do medium heat, let it come to temperature, add the burger then don't touch it let it sit for about four minutes or so you'll see it kind of lift away around the edges and what that's doing is it's creating a nice caramelization around the bottom that will allow the burger to release itself from the I keep I'm like acting like I'm the burger <laughs> but it will release itself from the pan so you don't have to sit there and try to like you know mess with it and have it fall apart everywhere you want it to develop that crust you can easily flip it not only does it make it easier when you're cooking but it also makes it more delicious because you're getting even caramelization caramelization almost always equals flavor I made sure that this was fully warmed through but I did make sure not to overcook it because I didn't want it to be too hard and I think that's one of the reasons that I'm really enjoying the texture so much is it's warm it's cooked through slightly crisp around the edges but the texture is a little bit nicer I think than like the Beyond Burger for example it has a really good amount of salt so you get a lot of flavor but it's not overly smoky some vegan burgers are very very smoky and kind of have that charcoal 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 grill flavor this doesn't have that so much it has a slight smokiness but really what you're getting is just a nicely seasoned vegan burger patty i like the thickness of the burger too like when you bite into it it feels like a proper like a good burger i'm impressed bring this to any barbecue Okay, I made myself a little selection of everything. When I was a kid, obviously loved bagels, still do, and we always used to get Publix bagels, I remember. And my sister's favorite was the blueberry bagel with the strawberry Philadelphia cream cheese. I really liked that combo too, but that was like specifically her bagel. And so whenever I see strawberry cream cheese, I always think, oh man, I can't wait till they make a vegan one so that I can recreate that because it's just very nostalgic and it reminds me of when we were kids. So I'm really, really excited to try this one. It's not a blueberry bagel but still, I think it should be good. And it smells like strawberry yogurt, like strawberries and cream kind of thing. It's exactly like I remember it. 10 out of 10. The consistency is really nice. It has a very nice, thick and spreadable consistency. Like all cream cheeses, when it's cold out of the refrigerator, it is a little bit harder, but once it softens up a little bit, it spreads really, really nicely. And I did a nice thick layer on a whole wheat bagel and oh, <laughs> my childhood. I don't even want to try anything else. I just want more of that cream cheese. Next, I'm going to totally switch gears, go savory, and try the lemon garlic hummus. And it does have that roasted garlic right in the center. Oh, it smells very garlicky. That is delicious. Chickpeas, water, garlic, sesame, tahini, canola oil, concentrated lemon juice, sea salt, dill, and red pepper flakes. It's so garlicky. This would be particularly good as a dip with carrots. For some reason, I'm feeling like that combination would be especially delicious. Or if you did a wrap, like a veggie wrap, and you had shredded carrots and like shredded cabbage and stuff. First one is the garlic truffle. I did have it on the burger, but I did such a thin layer that I didn't really get to taste it. So I'm gonna taste it on its own. Hmm, the garlic flavor is strong. The truffle flavor is subtle. Like you almost don't notice that it's truffle until the end. It's like a little like whisper of truffle in the background after you've eaten it, but it's not like truffle in your face. And it's got a really creamy, it almost tastes like an egg-based mayonnaise. It's really rich and creamy. The consistency is super thick. Next up is the one I'm the most excited about and it's the chimichurri aioli. I think this would be so good with roasted potatoes. She's herby. Mmm. This one has a little bit of like levity to it, a little bit of freshness. That would also be really good on any kind of like veggie wrap if you were gonna do like a rainbow veggie sandwich or veggie wrap. I also feel like that one might be the one that she uses on her um, vegan sausages when she puts the hot dog in the hot dog bun. Okay, this one is the cilantro. 
I feel like that would be really good on a vegan crab cake. Or if you were doing like vegan fish tacos or something like that, this would be really good on that because it has a little bit of citrus, so it's like a little bit lighter. I would probably put it in a squirt bottle and just do a very, you know, kind of small zigzag on top just as like a finishing touch and adding a little bit of creaminess. I think the garlic one is probably my least favorite. Now that I'm going back to it, the garlic one is fine, but I think I would rather use the lemon garlic hummus as a creamy garlic spread instead of that. It's red potatoes, relish, Dijon mustard, green onions, and garlic. It tastes fresh. None of the flavors really stand out on their own. They blend together really nicely. So it's not like I'm tasting one ingredient more than the other. It's very cohesive and fresh. And it's mostly savory, but there's a little bit of sweetness. And I love that. I love how the creamy sauce has a lot of tang to it. It's got some good vinegar and relish vibes going on, but it has that touch of sweetness that helps to balance everything. Really good. Like, I didn't expect it to be so fresh tasting. One thing I will say, and this has nothing to do with Tabitha or the actual potato salad itself, it's the packaging. When I was at Target, I picked this up, and as soon as I did, the top flew right off. It's like a very flimsy plastic top. Luckily, it's sealed, so it you know, didn't make a mess or anything, but the top kind of flew off, it fell on the floor, picked it up, put it back on, and then I put it in my basket. And then I took it and I put it on the conveyor belt at checkout, same thing happened, it popped right off. And I was like, oh, this top. And so I'm like pushing it down, it doesn't wanna go on properly. And by this point, the top has been all over the place and I'm thinking, okay, make sure you remember when you get home to not put the top back on once it's open, put it in a container just to keep it sanitary. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm not gonna store it in this container because the top kept falling off. So anyway, that's more of like a message to target manufacturing, like just, the container itself was not very sturdy, but other than that, I really like it. <laughs> Another thing that I really wanted to try was the soup. I know that she has a butternut squash soup and also a chili, but they were totally sold out. Pre-made chili as a grab-and-go option is so handy because not only can you just have it as chili, but you can also warm it up and serve it inside of a baked potato. You can make some oven-baked sweet potato fries and add the vegan chili on top with some vegan cheese, maybe some scallions, and have this really fun kind of chili cheese fry situation. So it's a really versatile product. So I really wanted to try her version. And as soon as it comes to a target near me, I will be giving it a try, but I'd love to know if you guys have tried either the butternut squash or the vegan chili. So let me know in the comments below. She also has home and kitchenware. And I saw these really cute avocado serving bowls. They're each kind of like different shades of like a jewel toned green, just a variety, like an ombre of those. So I feel like whether you're using one or using them all in a set for entertaining, they're just very cute. And when I was checking out the cashier asked me if I would want one of these magazines it was kind of over by where the bags were it's basically like recipes to go along with all of the products that are for sale I actually took a picture of this and sent it to my sister and to my boyfriend because I've never seen Target do that before like obviously Target has worked with influencers and celebrities before like if you think about the Magnolia range at Target it's pretty much limited to the home section and they have this huge beautiful range and this ongoing partnership but it's kind of stays in its lane, right? And like the celebrity collabs that they do in the clothing section is usually limited to the clothing section. But Tabitha's collection is so cool because it has so many different elements to it. And all throughout the store, there's like signs. It's like, this is the Tabitha Brown section. This is the Tabitha Brown section. And even like having a magazine like this that's available to anyone who wants it at checkout. I've just never seen Target so completely embrace a creator before and it just made me realize that just because something hasn't ever been done before doesn't mean that's not possible it really was inspiring to me because there are things that are possible that we can't even imagine but it doesn't mean that they're impossible i think a lot of people have dreamed of having a line at target but i don't think that something like this that transcends all these different departments and is on this level is something that people would have really thought was possible but it turns out that it totally is and i think that's just really inspiring there's a quote that i've been thinking a lot about ever since i heard it which is that you don't always have to see the whole staircase you just have to take the first step all you have to do is just get started and you know sort of do what you need to do with what you have in that moment keep keep taking those steps and you have no idea what could open up you have no idea what that staircase is going to look like and in this case like her staircase has just been so extraordinary it's just so grand but i don't think i i've listened to a lot of interviews with her i don't know her personally but i don't think she would say that she in 
envisioned all of that from the very beginning. I think she just kind of did what felt right and it led to really beautiful things because it was authentically her and she was sharing herself in a very real and consistent and intentional way. And so I find it super inspiring. I'm so proud of her. And on top of it, I really like so much of her collection. I didn't have one thing that I didn't like. It wasn't anything that was bad or had a weird texture. The only thing I would say is that some of the items were more mildly flavored and some were more like boldly flavored, but there was nothing that was not good. And I think that's a huge triumph, especially when you have a range that's this big. So for me, this is a win all around. I think it's so cool, especially for Team Vegan, to see a major, major company like Target embracing and celebrating veganism like this is so cool too. So give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Share with a friend. Everybody loves Target. So if you have a friend who is always at Target, share this video with them and help give them some good ideas for their next haul. And I will see you guys in a video very soon. Bye.